God's a good God. Amen. Amen. Aren't you thankful for a church and a safe place that you can come to? Uh, whenever disaster and things are going on in this world, God's always going to have a church. He's always going to have a people. Man, if, if you don't want to live for it, God's going to find somebody that wants to live for him. Amen. But aren't you thankful for a church? Amen. A lighthouse that you can run to and know that you're safe. Man, the Bible says that he's a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and are safe. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. Amen. And, uh. I was praying that this thing would just break out and have to preach. Um, hey man, I, I don't have a whole lot. Uh, you'll probably just get another Happy Meal message uh, until your pastor gets back. and uh, Quarter pounder, what they were talking about yesterday. Um, we can uh, take up an offering real quick before we get into the word of God uh, this morning but I do want to give honor while he's getting that to your man and God talked to him yesterday for a little bit um, and he I think is going to be back Friday and so but again I, I love and appreciate Brother Smith and Sister Smith and their, their family and then they are a blessing to us and I know that they our blessing to you all. Uh, I give honor to my pastor this morning, Elder Putman and Sister Putman, and my bishop, Elder Jones. Um, amen. And I love and appreciate my wife and kids. Amen. It's my main objective. Not just to see myself go to heaven, but to try to see my kids go to heaven. Amen. I ask God to help me every day, amen, to, to lead them in the right direction. And maybe I pray that, Sister Harrington, that whenever they get old enough and they move out, that they're still in the church. I tell my boys all the time, and even my daughters, to say, you know what, I want you to be better than I am. Amen. I, I don't have a problem if my kids can outpray me. I don't have an issue if my kids cannot worship me. I don't, I don't have a problem if they get up there and they can outdo dad. Because you know what? I'll step back and say, thank you, Jesus. Because they're not out in the world and they're not out on the dance floor somewhere being hung over on alcohol or whatever it is. But they're in the church house and they're dancing for Jesus. You know, that's the best thing that a father and a mother could ever ask for. Is knowing that their kids are in the house of God. But they're not just there to please mama and daddy. But they're there because they come to worship and magnify God. Amen. That's the main objective in my life. Is to see my kids on a church pew. But most importantly that they're not just on the church pew. But they're on fire for God. Like Jeremiah. I said it, it shut up in my bones like a fire. Oh, whenever they come into the house of God, amen, I'm thankful, amen, to see my kids, amen, from little to the old that has their little drumsticks and they're mocking, amen, the drum player, amen, and they're not mocking somebody else. I thank God, amen, for my kids to have a desire to want to learn, amen, to play an instrument in the house of God, amen. You know what? That's the best thing that a dad can feel is knowing that their kids it may want to be used by God and not by this world. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Jackson wants to learn the piano. Amen. Ryder wants to learn the guitar. Braxton wants to be a drum player. And I'm okay with that because if I ever do evangelize, at least I got my boys that can help me back up. And they can get up there and play music for dad. And I can try to sing if God wants me to sing. But you know what? That's what I want. 
Use them, God. Man, use them, God. Man, you know, I might get frustrated sometimes when Brother Braxton's over there banging on them drums at home, but you know what? Sometimes I got to say to myself, God, that's, that's what it takes. It takes some practice, but it takes commitment and some dedication. I know I got a message, but I feel this. Uh, amen. You don't try to hinder your kids if they're trying to be used by God. If they're in there, amen, and they're drumming it up and they're singing some praises to God, you don't need a... Oh. I'm, I'm guilty of it myself. I went in there and told them to be quiet. Dad's got a headache. But you know what? I want to see them be used by God. Man. Man, let's try to get to this. Uh, Bubba said that I need to take 20 minutes before my message. Take 45 minutes during my message. And then take another 20 minutes after my message. Um. Man, so I'm no nowhere near uh, the man of God that your pastor is this morning. I know that he may take 20 minutes before his message, and I know he may make, take 45 minutes, an hour in his message, and he may take some time afterwards. But uh, one thing that I know about Brother Smith, it's always anointed. It's always anointed. Amen. Man, and that's, that's the most important thing. Amen. So if you have your Bible this morning, I promise I won't take too much time. Um, I'll try to be in between pool time and Brother Smith time. And so, amen. Amen. We're going to turn to the book of Acts, chapter 14, starting in verse 19. Again, I give honor amen, to your man of God and to this church family. We love you all so very much. This will be uh, always home to us when we come. And, uh, but I'm going to preach to you like I do at home. Amen, amen. So, Acts 14, verse 19, if you got it, say amen. 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 And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day, he departed with Barnabas to the to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Man, I want to preach just for a moment on this thought. Wounded, but not given up. Wounded, but not given up. Amen. Can you help me pray uh, once again, church, to help us? God, to help us in this house this morning, Lord, to speak. I just see the hearts of the people in this place. God, I'm asking, Lord, to, to move and reach and help God to use me, Lord, to be a mouthpiece, God, for your kingdom. God, I want you, Lord, to move and work. God, this is your service. God, we come to give honor to you and glorify and worship you once again in this place. God, to work and move things. God, work some things out in this house. God, you see it all. God, in the name of Jesus, God, to help us. Amen. Can you say in Jesus' name? And thank you for standing on the word of God. You can be seated. Amen. We find... Here in the book of Acts chapter 14 that Paul, amen, and uh, uh, Barnabas, they went to a place, a city called Lystra. Before this setting of scriptures that I read to you that Paul uh, came to a lame man, and this lame man, he could not walk, and Paul uh, having faith and knowing what God can do, he began to pray over the slain man. The slain man began to walk. And the people in Lystra did not like it. They did not like the fact that a man of God was there and seeing what things were going on and happening. And Paul was going around preaching God's word. But we find in our reading this morning that uh, they got mad enough to where they took Paul and stoned him. 
They did not like what Paul was doing. They did not like the work that Paul was trying to do for God. They did not like the fact that, uh, that there was a lame man that got his miracle. But then again, we find Paul being stoned, and they thought that Paul was dead, so they threw him out. And they set him outside the city. We find that Paul, amen, shook himself off and got back up and he went back into the city. Amen. So as I begin to study and pray about this uh, situation and, and pray about this service and asking God to help me, amen, we have to have the attitude and yet the spirit of Paul, he could have stayed there and he could have died. He could have just laid there and said, you know, what's the point? I might as well not even care to try to go back into the city and doing God's work. But we find that Paul, amen, he came to himself, he rose up, amen, being beat up by stones and being beat up by the people of the city. Amen. But he went in there boldly and he went into the city and God began to work and help and move, uh, amen, some things out. Amen, even though Paul was hurt, he didn't give up on what God sent him to do. Amen, Paul had a mission. Amen, his mission was to go preach God's word. His mission was to see God work. His mission was, it didn't matter how bad he was or how much he was hurt, uh, amen, but he wanted to see somebody saved and somebody get their healing and somebody, amen, receive their miracle. Amen. So Paul could have stood there, but Paul knew uh, he had a revelation because when Paul uh, ever b began to be converted over to being a Christian, uh, Paul was on his way to Damascus. Amen. And God, amen, shine a light into his uh, life and begin to blind him. Amen. Paul, amen, was a murderer before his conversion. But we find Paul being one of the greatest apostles in the Bible. Amen. Writing over half of the New Testament uh, scriptures. Amen. We find that Paul, amen, did not let things get to him. Amen. Didn't let his flesh get to him. Paul said, I die daily. So we find out that Paul was a man on a mission. It wasn't on a man on a mission of trying to destroy God's people, but he had a different mission when God saved him. And that mission was, I got to go and I got to preach and I got to let them know what God can really do. Amen. So, amen, we don't need to stay in the mind of defeat when the enemy is telling you that you're doing and what you're doing for God is no good. You might as well clean it up. You might as well quit. You might as well just fold your arms. But you know what? Amen. The enemy had the same, amen, chief desire, amen, to tell Paul that he might as well do the same thing, but Paul didn't quit, Paul didn't give up, Paul didn't throw in the towel, but Paul rose to his feet whenever he was stoned to death, and he said, I must go back into the city, because my mission here is not over, my mission here ain't accomplished just yet, but here, Barnabas, let's go back and do God's work. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Wounded. But I'm not giving up. Amen. We, uh, Pearl Harbor, December 7th of 1941, we read, and I'm just going to take a little bit of time this morning. We're only having one service, so we're going to find and see what God's going to do uh, today. Amen. So I uh, find I was reading through some of my notes. And, uh, we know, especially, uh, I don't know if they teach it nowadays because our school systems are kind of crazy. But, uh, but when I was growing up, they always taught history. They tell us the history of what the American people and our, and our, and our world and our fights and the wars that we went through. But uh, Pearl Harbor... December 7th of 1941, most of us know uh, the greatest attack that happened on the American soldiers. It was a surprise attack on the American people in Honolulu, Hawaii. There was 2,403 sailors, soldiers, and civilians were killed, and about 1,000 people were wounded. But the Japanese had failed to cripple the Pacific fleet 
By the 1940s, battleships were no longer the most important naval vessel. Aircraft carriers were, and then as it happened, all the Pacific's fleet carriers were away from the base on December 7th. Somehow, some had returned to the mainland and others were delivered, uh, delivering planes to troops on Midway and Wake Islands. Moreover, the Pearl Harbor assault had left the base most vital onshore facilities, oil storage depots, repair shops, shipyards, and submarine docks intact. As a result, the U.S. Navy was able to rebound relatively quickly from the attack. And President Franklin D. Roosevelt addressed a joint session of the U.S. Congress on December 8th, the day after the crushing attack in Pearl Harbor. He said in these words, yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which we will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the empire of Japan. And he went on to say, no matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. He says, I believe I interpret the will of the Congress and the people when I assert that we will not only defend ourselves to the othermost, but will make very certain that this form of treachery shall never endanger us again. Again, he said, no matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. And I'm going to paraphrase this and put it into a spiritual perspective. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated battle, the church of the living God in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. Amen. So I it don't matter, but we're eventually going to overcome, and we're eventually going to see some victory. But if they decided to sit there and not do anything in the midst of this battle, the Japanese would have took over and would have destroyed all of our soldiers. But in this mindset that our great president of that time Decided to say, you know, it's going to take some time, but we're going to overcome. Amen. But most importantly, we're going to see a victory. Amen. So that's what we got to face in this church world and, and everything that we're going through is that we need to have the willingness of not just throwing in the towel, of not just giving up when things come our way. And it seems like every battle from hell is coming towards us. But as the old saying is, is uh, hell and high water, I'm going to fight, amen, until I can't fight no more. Yeah. Amen. But the difference between us and these people is that we got God on our side. Amen. We don't have to fight this thing alone. Amen. And that's what the enemy tries to tell you, that you're all by yourself. Amen. There's no point, amen, in trying to fight. There's no point, amen, in going into that little apostolic church, amen, in Claire. There's no point, amen, in showing up for prayer meeting, amen. But you know what, amen, that just shows you, amen, this morning when you come into the house of God that there's still a fight left inside your soul, amen. I come to tell somebody in this house this morning, amen, you don't have to leave defeated. You don't have to leave with the same old problems that you face. Brother Aaron, you can receive your healing. God can take care of that stomach problem. Amen. You don't have to miss no more church because of sickness, but you can leave here, amen, healed. You can leave here transformed. You can leave here with the Holy Ghost, but you don't need to have the attitude of just giving up. Amen. I might be hurt. I might be down a little. I might even be wounded, but I'm not going to give up. I'm still going to stand. I'm still going to fight. I'm still going to come to the house of God because you know what? I got a God. Amen. That the Bible says that he was wounded for our transgression. Yeah. Rose for our iniquity. 
Amen. God went through it. You can see victory. Man, you can be seated. Giving up means to cease doing or attempting something, especially as an omission of defeat. Quit, often used with honor. Don't give up on the mission. Don't give up on the mission. It says to cease doing or attempting something. Amen. Especially as an omission of defeat. My. Man, how many, how many of us has ever uh, come to the house of God and felt like you're defeated? I mean, it felt like you uh, just never was going to accomplish anything. And uh, the devil's perfectly fine with you sitting on a church pew. But he's not fine whenever you decide to overcome your problem. But we find that a lot of times we come to church and we're going through some stuff and uh, sometimes it feels like it's just too much that we can bear. We come time after time and time after time again to the house of God. We'll even pray, God, you see this situation, Lord, I, I really need you to move and touch me, God, I need your help. I need to go home with the same problems. Go home with the same situations and you come back again the next service and you have the same prayer. God, I'm hurting, God. I'm really, really down today, Lord. I need your help. This whole time the devil's talking to you, there's no point. There's no point in you continue to keep praying that, that prayer because God's never going to show up. And then you come to church again and you... You decide, to, well, I'm going to push one more time and see what God, if God's going to answer and help me this time. And you pray it again and you still go home the same way that you came. And we go home and we start questioning God instead of praying and saying, God, how come I'm going through this heart, heartache and I'm going through the pain that I'm going through and why is it that you haven't answered the Amen, my prayer just yet. How come, God, I, I'm feeling like I'm feeling this way? And, and I've, I've been coming to you, Lord, time after time and asking you to help me. Amen, but then again, it starts settling in that you might as well just give up. But then your pastor starts worrying. Where's brother so-and-so at? Or sister so and so at where, where at, why why they're not here tonight I, um, you know I feel whatever you know, I tell them I don't know I don't know pastor I don't I don't know where they're at. Service goes service goes and services go and then they're still not there and you finally get a hold of them and they, they tell you I'm just giving up. I just I'm just gonna quit. There's there's no point in going to church. There's no point in even trying. Because God, God never showed up and answered uh, my, my, my prayer. And, and I'm just I'm so hurt that I just feel like this is the best route. That I, I should just go ahead and not even come back to church. And, and I might as well. No, that's just an excuse. Well, I, I, I didn't move because the spirit wasn't right. I didn't move because the, law, the song leader didn't sing the right song. I, I didn't want to raise my hand because because they didn't say the right words when they were preaching. I I I, I didn't want to pray because the spirit just wasn't quite right enough for me to pray. Well, I, I I just you know I decided to show up right on time for church instead of being there thirty minutes before to help pray because I just didn't feel like it. I I just didn't feel like I should. Well, the spirit's just not right. I you know it's excuse after excuse, and you wonder why you're going through these things. Sometimes, you know, it feels like, well, I, I feel this in the Holy Ghost that uh, even if you don't want to, you still ought to praise Him. Yeah. Yeah. 
Even if the spirit may, may not be just right for you, you still need to give God some praise. Because even in those times and even in those situations, it might be that one time, even if you don't feel like it, that God decides to give you the victory. Amen. So we got to get through this mindset of giving up. That should never even be in our vocabulary, church. We should not ever have the mindset of ever quitting. Amen. You should have the mindset, I refuse to quit. Because you know what? It doesn't matter, God, even if I don't feel like it. Amen. It doesn't matter if the Spirit's not just right. I'm still going to come into the house of God with my hands lifted. Because I know I might be wounded some, Lord, but I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give in. Because you you know what, God, I don't have no excuse because you did it for me. You paid the price. You were wounded for us. Oh, but God, I'm not going to use the excuse that the Spirit's not right. I'm not going to use the excuse, amen, that it's not, amen, the same exact words that I want to hear. But, oh, God, I come to give it all to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I may be wounded, but I'm not giving up. Amen, I don't care. Amen, the Spirit made me. Amen, it might be moving on somebody else. Amen, but you know what, God? I'm going to get into the service with them. Amen, and see, hey, you know what? I want to get what they got. Amen, I see them leaping around and jumping and running the aisles, and they're spinning around and doing the whirly bird. Amen, the Holy Ghost is moving on them. Oh, God, but let me go just grab them and see if I can get some of what they got. But instead, we want to sit there and make excuse after excuse after excuse that the excuse. We don't need no more excuses. God, you just have a move of God. We don't need... Well, come on, somebody. Amen, I come to tell you. Amen, it's time. Amen, to quit with the excuses and say, God, I want to see a move of God. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. But I come to preach. I come to preach. Man, I'm getting sick and tired of it. Of the excuses. And I'm getting sick and tired of the nonchalantness and the complacency. Amen. We wonder, amen, why we're not seeing a move of God. It's because of too many excuses on why. Well, God, we have next service. No, 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 no. It could be this service. Well, I understand Brother Smith ain't here, and if I say something that doesn't line up to your man of God, you go with your man of God, and he can talk to me about it later. My pastor can deal with me, but you know what? I'm sick and tired of these excuses. Amen. The enemy has come in and say it's never going to happen. Well, you know what? If you sit there and believe it, it's not going to happen. But God is saying, you know, I'm waiting. Just like the prodigal son, amen, he came to himself and realized that his father had everything that he needed and wanted. Amen. we got to have that same mindset of saying I may be wounded, I may be hurt, I may be going through some thumps, but it doesn't give me the excuse to just sit on God. It doesn't give me an excuse to just say, no, I'm not going to do it this service. It doesn't give me an excuse of saying, oh, well, it's just not the right spirit. Oh, that piano player didn't hit the right key. That drum player didn't hit the right cymbal. But you know what? we got to have, amen, that attitude of saying it doesn't matter because we're not there trying to serve and worship, amen, the piano player or the drum player. But we're there to see a move of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, I want to see the spirit move. Oh God, I want to see somebody healed. Got somebody touched. Somebody filled with the Holy Ghost. But help us, Lord, to get the excuses out of here. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Man, there's a story. I'll probably mess the whole story up. It's a book that someone wrote, and the book was about some soldiers. Uh, they were held captive, I believe it was another country, and I think it was about four or five of these soldiers, and they ended up escaping prison, and so they were on the run on foot, 
are up in the mountains. And they were going through. And the, uh, one of the guys who took charge was a leader. And he told him, he said, men, if we just, if we stop going, we're not going to make it. But we must keep moving. And they went through some extensive weather and rain and thunderstorms and going and trying to find stuff to eat while they're making their way through uh, the wilderness and way through these mountains. And next thing you know, they get to a place where they find themselves uh, in a blizzard and snow and their clothes are all tore up and their shoes are falling apart and uh, they're already uh, looking pretty hungry and looking, you know, but they're all got beards and all uh, just not, not looking very good. But as the blizzard came, they're sitting there and snow began to pile up and it got to their knees. And uh, the man told them, he said, we got to keep moving through this because if we, we stop, we're going we're gonna to end up getting frostbite and, and we're going to start losing stuff and we're going to freeze to death. So we got to keep moving. So they all got in a circle and locked arms, and and they started going back and forth with their legs up high to keep them keep their blood pumping and flowing and going. And, and they did that. They did that for hours and keep themselves warm. And and the, and some of them wanted to quit. Some of them wanted to give up. But the the main guy says we cannot quit. We cannot give up because if we do, we're going to die. Right. We got to keep going. We got to keep fighting. And. And as these men kept on doing it, and, and they started, they got through the blizzard, and they started making their way through, and they, they found themselves uh, in, a, in a place of finally of, of freedom and safety. And they found uh, to some, I believe it was another base that they ended up getting to, and they, they went and they took them, these men into the hospital, and they began to uh, care for them. And most of them had frostbite already, and most of them, uh, they had lice and had all sorts of stuff because of the beard. They, they were all tore up from from making their way of trying to escape from this prison. Uh, but then the doctor, the nurse, said it was a, the most amazing thing is because they had to end up strapping these guys to the bed because their feet was constantly just moving. So they would get up and just kept moving and kept moving and kept moving. So eventually they had to strap them down, and all you could see across these, these beds is that these men are just moving their feet nonstop. So they made it to safety, but their feet are just constantly moving. The doctor asked the man, he said, why? He said, well, I told them that if we quit moving and we give up, we're going to die. But they didn't quit. They might have had some health problems, but they always kept their feet going. Because they knew that if they would have stopped where they were at, they would have died. They were wounded, but they didn't give up. They were wounded, but they didn't give up. And sometimes that's how we feel when we come into the house of God is that we, we seem like spiritually we're crawling ourselves through the door. Seems like spiritually we're just fighting. And it's never going to come to a close of seeing victory. And it feels like that we're just barely making it through. And we're just crawling our way to the house of God. And our head is down. And, and it seems like we're on the verge of just giving up. So... Here it is. Brother, Brother Joe, I want you to help me. I want you to get all the way down like you're crawling. You're, you're skinny and you can do it. Get all like all on the face. Just I want you to get down first. And that's how we feel. Spiritually, we just can't go no more. It feels like we're just crawling our way and we're almost laying down and, and we might as well just accept our defeat. And I crawl a little bit. And here he is just crawling, God. Oh, I'm hurting God, but I'm still coming. I, I know I'm crawling my way through, but God, here I am. He's wounded, but he hasn't yet given the towel yet. Right. Stop a bit. 
But if he stayed there and didn't make the effort to try to move, he's going to die. Right. He's going to see the defeat. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He's going to see that uh, if I just stay here, I might as well just give up. Right. Let my wounds take over. Let the enemy have what he wants to do. And, and, and I, there's no point. But if you keep crawling, if you keep crawling, you keep making your way. Amen. And you see, amen, this is why I love, amen, unity. It's because if you see a brother struggling, or if you see a sister struggling, you see that they're going through some stuff, uh, amen, we can come along and say, you know what? Uh, amen, we can make it together. Come on. Amen, you don't got to crawl in the feet no more, but here I am helping you through some stuff. Uh, amen, we don't have to be defeated by the enemy, uh, but we can get together as a church uh, and bind together and say, you know what? Uh, I may be wounded, and I see my brother over there struggling, uh, but I'm going to take his hand, uh, and we're going to make the effort, uh, and we're going to help each other, uh, because that's what we do. Uh, with God, all things are possible. Uh, we can make it. Uh, we can fight, uh, but don't give up. Uh, keep coming, uh, and keep serving God oh hallelujah you can do it amen I'm not giving up amen are you giving up I'm not giving up. Sister Jimmy, we came too far to give up. Uh, amen. We've already been living for God way too long just to throw in the towel. Uh, I'm not going to let something stop me. Uh, amen. For coming to church. Uh, I'm not going to let no sickness. Uh, I'm not going to let. Uh, amen. You know what? When I was in that car accident, uh, I was there the next Sunday. Uh, I didn't get to go that Thursday uh, because I was at the hospital. Uh, but I marched in there Sunday morning. Uh, amen. With my hand all messed up. Uh, and I said, God, thank you once again. Uh, but the opportunity. I'm not going to let the devil keep me out of the house of God. I'm not going to let wounds defeat me because I'm going to see a victory as long as I keep coming to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, amen. I believe it. You can be healed right now, Brother Aaron. Amen. God can touch your body right now. God can move and work in your stomach situation right now as we speak. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, right now, touch him and move, God. Help him, oh, Lord. You see, God, I'm nothing. God, but you're everything, Lord. Right now, Jesus, you see the faithfulness. God, you see, oh, Lord, the things he's going through. Well, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Are you going to stay in defeat? Are you going to stay down? Are you going to stay wounded? Are you going to stay that I'm giving up? Are you going to get up one more time and make the effort? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's here, and he's here to meet your need. But if you stand there in defeat, you're never going to get your need. But if you step out in some confidence and say, God, here I am. Oh, hallelujah. Can we lift our hands and love him? Oh, hallelujah. Come on, church. Oh, amen. I know. <laughs> God's able. Come on. Hallelujah. God's able. Amen. Come on. We got to put the effort in. Amen. We got to put some, amen, some effort into this thing. We don't need to sit back, but God's opening up right here. You just got to step out of your pew and make your way up and say, God, you see the need. God, you see the situation. Oh, hallelujah. But if you stay in your seat, amen, and don't make the move, you're going to go home the same way that you came. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, church, let's pray. Amen. As they come to the music, I feel like God really wants to do something in somebody's life this morning. Amen. If you need the Holy Ghost, amen, today would be the good day for you to get the Holy Ghost. If you need healing in your body, amen, today is a good day to get touched by God. Amen. If you have a situation, amen, that you've been praying about, today could be the day that God answers it. But if you just sit in your pew, in your pew and if you just sit back, amen, but oh, if you step out of that comfort zone. Amen. And let God have an opportunity. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. These altars are open. And if you got a need, why don't you come to the front and pray for you. Amen. God's able to meet your need. You're up against the wall. Hallelujah. 
Come on, church. Come on, let's close our eyes.